Let's start with the first scientist, John Dalton. The first scientist that we are going to discuss is John Dalton. Eh? There are a few statements in uh, John Dalton's models of atom. Eh? According to John Dalton, all matter, everything in this world, okay, any metals in this world, composed of very, very small particles and it's called atoms. Okay, and then um, all atoms of a given element are identical, means that they are the same. For example, atoms of iron, all the atoms of iron are the same. They have the same size, same mass, and same chemical properties. And then uh, John Dalton says that different atoms, they can combine together. And they combine together to form some things called compounds. So atoms combine together to form compound, and then they combine according to certain ratio. For example, uh, water. Inside water, there are two types of atoms. Can any of you tell me what's atoms inside a water molecule? Hydrogens and oxygens. So there are hydrogens, H, and oxygens in inside a water molecules, right? Okay. This is a water molecule. John Dalton says that these atoms of hydrogens combine with the atoms of oxygen to form a compound called water. And they combine according to certain ratio, uh, given by rho, okay, the ratio is H2O, right, okay? So 2, 1, uh, the ratio is 2 to 1, uh, 2 to 1. So every water molecule, the ratio is always the same, 2 to 1, uh, okay? You can't have a water molecule which have 3 hydrogens and then 1 oxygen. Statement 4, in the chemical reactions, atoms are separated, combined, or rearranged. So according to Dalton, uh, these arrangements of atoms, uh, you can separate it and then rearrange it to make them combine in uh, other manners and then form a new substance. And this process is called a chemical reaction. So what happened in the chemical reaction is not uh, the atoms has changed. The atoms does not change, but what changed is the arrangements of the atoms. John Dalton's uh, atoms look like this, just one piece of a sphere, something like this. Okay. So this is John Dalton's models. Uh. But then uh, later on, scientists found some weaknesses of John Dalton's uh, models of atom. It's a very good model. There are just some minor, minor weaknesses. The first one, Dalton says that the atoms cannot be divided into smaller particles, but now we learn that uh, we can break atoms into smaller particles, uh, and we call it subatomic particles. So atoms consist of even smaller particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons, and a few more. That is the first weaknesses of uh, Dalton's models of atom. Uh, the second one, atoms cannot be created or destroyed. And uh, later on, uh, scientists found that that's not true. We can create and we can destroy atoms in nuclear reactions. So atoms can be created and destroyed in the nuclear reactions, such as uh, nuclear fusions and uh, nuclear fissions. Nuclear fusions is the reactions where we combine atoms together to form a new one. We take two or more atoms, make them combine together. That's called uh, nuclear fusions. Nuclear fission is we break uh, an atom. You take one atom, you break it into two. Uh, this process is called nuclear fusion. You are going to discuss uh, nuclear fusions and nuclear fissions in the last chapters of Form 5 physics. Huh? Okay, so atoms can be created and destroyed. Huh? Okay? All atoms of a given elements are identical. Just now, we learned that all the atoms of iron are the same, right? But uh, not really, okay? Not really. Because later on, scientists found that the same elements, huh? They can have different types of atoms. Like for example, the carbons. We can have carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Eh? So three types of different atoms. Eh? So these different atoms, eh? they are still from the same elements. Eh? Few carbons, but they have different mass, different physical properties. Eh? And we call them isotopes. We are going to discuss isotope later. Inside an atom, there are electrons surrounded by a soup of positive charge. So you see, inside atoms, there are a soup or a clouds of positive charge. And uh he can't explain where this positive charge comes from. Okay, he just said inside atoms there are uh, clouds of positive charge, and then electrons. Uh, electron is distributed uniformly inside the atom. So that is the uh, JJ Thomson's uh, models, uh, and uh, the models look something like this. So you say inside atoms, okay, there are positive charge, okay, positive charge. Inside this uh, positive charge, there are electrons, and these electrons is distributed uniformly throughout these atoms. Okay, so this is how JJ Thomson's models look like. Uh, Sometimes uh, this model is called the plum puddings models, okay, or chocolate chips models. 
it looks like chocolate chips, right? Okay, this is the biscuit and this is the chocolate chips. Huh? This is a, okay, chocolate chips models or uh, plum puddings models. A spherical clouds of positive charge with uh, electrons uniformly distributed. That's uh, J.J. Thompson's models. Huh? Real the thoughts, huh? real the thoughts. Now, according to real the thoughts, huh? real the thought, he discovered protons. He found protons. Huh? So then, so if he's found protons, then he has to uh, rectify J.J. Thompson's models, okay? Yeah, because J.J. Thompson's models is uh, atoms just with electrons, there's no protons, right? But Rutherford, he discovered protons. So where is this proton he should locate? So according to Rutherford, uh, the atom, this is a wrong typing here, okay? The atom, uh, it's the atom. The atom is mostly empty space. Most of the atoms uh, is empty. 99.9% of the atom is empty. Nothing inside there, okay? And most of the atom's mass is concentrated in a tiny center that carries positive charge. So how does this model look like? The model looks like this. You see, you see uh, this is atoms, okay? This is atoms. And then so you see, there's a lot of empty space, right? A lot of empty space, 99.9% eh? .9 is empty space. But then in the center of these atoms, there is something called nucleus. And most of the mass, 99.9% .9 of the mass is concentrated at this nucleus. And electrons is just moving around the nucleus. Electron is moving around the nucleus. So this is real default models. Real default models. Eh? Uh, because he discovered protons. Eh? Okay, he discovered a proton, and then he say the proton is inside this nucleus. Huh? Proton is inside this nucleus. So more than ninety nine percent of the mass of the atom is concentrated at the nucleus. Huh? Build the force models. Let's continue now. It's Niels Bohr, huh? Niels Bohr. Now after after real the force, huh? so Niels Bohr he found that he does not find any new particles, huh? but he found that. The electrons in an atoms of elements are not randomly distributed around the atomic uh, nucleus. It's not like uh, Rutherford's model. Rutherford's model just says that the electrons will move around the nucleus, but he doesn't ex uh, describe how the electron move. Huh? But Niels Bohr, he discussed how the electron move around the nucleus. The way the, way the electron distributes or the way the electrons move around the nucleus. And he says, uh, the, the the electrons uh, does not move randomly. It's not move wherever he want. He the electron move in certain patterns. And he say electrons move around the nucleus in the fixed orbits. Uh. Fixed orbits means a fixed uh, path. Okay, a fixed path. Uh. Each orbit forms a circle and has a fixed distance from the nucleus. So that's Niels Bohr's uh, models. This is what he suggests. Okay, so his models look something like this. There's a nucleus in the center, okay, and then uh, all the positive charge is, is inside the nucleus. But then there's an electron surrounding the nucleus, and this electron it doesn't move uh, wherever as uh, as they like, okay. It, they, it will only move in certain orbits, uh, or certain path. That's called the quantum models. Uh. Niels Bohr's model is called the quantum models. Okay, that's Niels Bohr's models. Uh. Niels Bohr's models. Okay, James Chadwick. Uh, now James Chadwick he discovered neutrons. Okay, he discovered neutrons. Uh, this is the models of James Chadwick. He found that the neutron is also like a proton. Eh? Okay, it's located inside the nucleus. Okay, nine more than ninety percent, ninety nine percent, more than ninety nine percent of the mass eh? is concentrated at the nucleus. And uh, James Chadwick found that inside the nucleus there is another particles called the neutrons. The rest is still the same as what proposed by uh, Niels Bohr. Eh? Okay, there's a nucleus and then. Uh, electrons is move around the nucleus. Okay, electrons move around the nucleus. So that is a uh, James Chadwick models. Eh? So the conclusions, eh? the conclusions from uh, the previous uh, scientists. Eh? Okay, so finally we follow James Chadwick's models. Okay, so inside an atoms there are three subatomic particles: proton, neutron, and electron. Neutrons located in the center, and the centers. Proton also at the center, and this is called the nucleus. Eh? This is called the nucleus, and then electrons moving around uh, uh, follows uh, the certain orbits. Eh? So certain orbits. So that is the models of atoms that we are going to use in SPM. Now this is only in SPM. Eh? When you go to higher levels like STPM, you are going to learn another models. Okay, 
So in SBM, to make things simple, you just learn, uh, we just follow these models. The central nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. It contains almost all the mass, okay? And then uh, the nucleus of an atom is very small compared to the size of the atom. As I s told you just now, this is less than 0.1%. Eh? Okay, the size is less than 0.1%. The electrons are orbiting outside the nucleus in the electron shell. So it moves around the, this orbit. And this orbit, we call it the electron shell. Eh? Okay, electron shell. And the electrons are moving in electron shell as a very high speed, uh, at a very high speed, okay? So the center here, this is called the nucleus. And uh, the, the particles inside the nucleus is called the nucleon. Eh? Okay, this is nucleus. And uh, the particles inside the nucleus called the nucleon, and therefore proton is nucleon, eh? and neutron is also a nucleon because proton and neutron is located inside the nucleus, eh? so therefore they are called the nucleon.